Hey everyone, welcome back to the Polish Delight. Your girl Rachel Michael, and I'm super excited that we started the relationship series. And last week we talked about the institution of love with Akin Akin Pelu. And this week we're going to be talking about how you can interact with your younger self and how it affects your relationship. And today's host will be no other person but our very own beautiful Olamide Akin Pelu. Sit back and listen because the next voice you're going to be listening to will be that of Olamide Akin Pelu. So enjoy. Hi, good day everyone out there listening to me. My name is Olamide Akin Pelu. I'll be talking to you today on interacting with the younger self. Okay, so to everyone listening to me i want to believe that um you can really say one thing or the other about yourself let me not assume i want to believe so okay so what's the true definition of you do you know your identity can you speak well about yourself if someone actually walks up to you today and ask you about yourself the question is what do you say are you someone that the first thing that comes out of your mind will be you defining yourself based on your pedigree or based on your achievements so far or are you someone that once they ask you the same question all that comes out of you is what it's it's the definition of the you okay so the you is about your own self self identity how well have you been able to identify yourself how well do you have an understanding of yourself do you really know your what resonates with you do you even or have an understanding of your love language? Do you have an understanding of your personality type? Do you have a, an understanding of your belief system? Okay, these are three critical things for you to look into critically for you to better feel comfortable in your own skin and express yourself well. Okay, because if you truly lack your own true identity that's yourself it's going to be a struggle for you in achieving so many things it's going to be a struggle for you overall being successful because trust me it's just going to be like you're walking in another man's shadow and you are ideally meant to walk in the full expression of who you truly are the question is who are you Okay, so speaking of the love language, how well do you know your love language? Number one, based on team, I it broke it down to four different love languages, such as word of affirmation, you have quality time, you have giving of gifts and art of service. What does this mean? Art of service is, okay, I just want you to step in and help me out. To some person, that the love language that resonates with them. If they can just find a true partner that just steps in and helps them out, you've resonated well and you've been able to express. Okay, so to some persons, actually giving off the gifts. Okay, so it doesn't have to be uh, almighty gifts. Do you understand? It doesn't have to be cost implicating. It can be as little as a pen. It can be as little as a book journal. Okay, so it is the motive around the gift that really matter. Okay, so to some persons, actually quality time. Like I said, quality time is different from quantity time. Okay, so it's not about you having your partner around you all of the time, but it's about the question of when you guys are together, what do you see? What conversations do you hold as an is it going to be a wow moment kind of conversation that wants you guys to stay together and lock yourself together? Or is it a conversation that actually drifts you guys uh, apart? Do you understand? So quality time, that's why Tim Lai actually said something about quality time and not quantity time. Okay, it's good we pay attention to the quality time you spend with your partner. And it doesn't have to be a long length of time like that. It can be as little as 5-10 minutes but the thing is what uh, what's the quality of your stay together okay that goes a long way to to knowing and identifying what love language actually resonates with your partner okay so um, another thing is word of affirmation to some persons all they need is thank you i love you 
you mean the world to me just affirm them just confirm your love to them this is actually very critical some persons actually say that they do not pay attention to this because they say that uh, you already should know that i love you okay you don't have to make me resound it over and over again for those spouse that falls under the category of affirmation trust me for them to understand that you as a spouse you're mindful of them you have to keep resounding it to them every time every now and then okay it's not that they're falling short emotionally it's just the love that resonates with them okay so you give it to them according to what resonates with them okay so everybody out there i want to believe that from my analysis you've been able to pinpoint and say that okay i think i fall under this category i think it's actually the act of service for me i think it's actually the gift or the word of affirmation or the quality time with me the question is what time what what um what what's your love language what do you think resonates with you and your partner the 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 high time we actually settle are you on this aspect the better for our love life to be blissful if not a whole lot of marriages actually struggle because they have not been able to identify what love language actually resonates with them and that's why i'm taking my time to actually break it down for you to have a proper understanding to some persons you already have an idea but the question is have you sat yourself down to critically look inwards and say that okay so why do i keep having issues in my marriage why do i keep having issues in my relationship what are the things i am not paying attention to this is actually a very fundamental thing as little as this actually breaks relationship it breaks marriages so it's good you actually pay attention to that so speaking of personality type right now yes um we have the extroverted persons and we have the introverted person so the extroverted persons those are the happy go-to people those are the people that looks to have love to have a lot of people around those are the boys terrors kind of persons those are the life of the party those are the people when, when, when you see them you know that see i have arrived these are the categories of the extroverted nature okay for the introverted this are a bit laid back set of people that do not really want to have people around as such because having so many people around might be emotionally draining for them okay so um and um they're a bit laid back like i said but the question is um is there a problem with them no just that for every personality there's a, an advantage and disadvantage advantages and disadvantages okay so it's critical that you actually identify what category of person you are what um, nature do you belong under the personality category are you in the um, extrovertish um, category or you're in the introverted kind of category okay so to some introverted they are loner they like to spend time alone okay to some persons they are in between um and not like they really like mingling as such but at the same time they do not mind how Ever, their dominant gene says that you know what my best moment is actually spent alone when i have a book to read when i just have my me time so it's very very good because sometimes this mixing your personality or acting against your personality will be like a big stressor on you and trust me on the long run it has a very very bad side effect on your mental health okay if this is you just accept you for you if this is the extrovertish nature is you do not lie to your partner or act against your person and act against who you are as a person because trust me you're going to stress yourself overall it's going to affect your mental health before you know you start withdrawing from your partner before you know it your partner actually interprets it to be resentment and in your 
out of heart, you know, this is not so, okay? So please, if we can actually rearrange and if we can actually look deeply inwards and correct some mistakes, it has a long way to helping us advance blissfully in our relationship as well as our marriage, okay? So the third thing is your belief system. Uh, okay, so your belief system says it about, it categorizes you from either a first world, second world person, or a third world person. I'm going to break that down. A first world person are this um, um, recent generational kind of person. When I mean this recent generational, so like I said, the first generational set of people or category of people are those that think in the now okay so you're thinking in the now doesn't make you it's age is actually no determinant of those thinking in the now okay so you are it doesn't make you a millennial okay um uh, so for you you're seeing relationship as a two-way thing those are the first world person you see relationship as a two-way thing. You're not seeing it as a servant to a boss kind of um, way. Do you understand? That's how a first worlder actually thinks. Okay, so you, you don't have a problem if we need to um, contribute our finances together. You do not have a problem if um, the finances is actually more to the woman's side than the man's side so far you guys can sit down consolidate your funds together you are good to go you are a category of people that even if your mother-in-law your father-in-law comes in you really do not have to go all out to kneeling and crawling before you present them with your food do you understand okay so i'm going deep into explaining so that you have an understanding of how a first worlder actually thinks okay so that's the category of a first worlder Okay, so we come to the second world person. These are categories of people that are in between the first world and in between the second world. Okay, so they might not totally agree with you not stooping low or kneeling down to your inlets where they come. So they'll still have a part in, you know what, let's still be a bit of a traditional person. By kneeling down, um, doing all those um, ceremonious uh, activity once your in-law is around, do you understand? You might not even totally agree with the 50-50 kind of finances ratio, do you understand? You still want to partly believe that, you know what, as much as the world is advancing, but at the same time, I will still appreciate my partner, who happens to be the male version of me, still Put the more uh, more financial be still more financially responsible for the family okay so that's how a second world person actually thinks okay so we move to the third world person a third world uh, says that you know what no matter how age is not a respecter of a third world person you might be as young as 20 years of age. You might be as young as 24 years of age. And trust me, your mindset is all about your, your thinking three generations backwards. Okay? So you are someone that you feel if a lady or if a woman, you're expected to be um, the home caregiver in the home, you determine the atmosphere of your home, you are supposed to take care of your husband, you are meant to, it is a compulsion for you to do the meals, three square meals a day. Um, it is important that your um Husband should be totally and hundred percent financially responsible for their home because you might quote the scripture in the Bible that says that a man that doesn't provide for his woman or his for his family is as worse as an infidel. Okay, so that's how a third world person actually thinks. They usually categorize them as the traditional mindset kind of people. Okay, so speaking of the belief system, simply means that the way your mindset actually works. Okay, so now to everybody listening under the sound of my voice, the question is what category of, um, what kind of mindset do you have? 
Are you the first world person that thinks in the now? Are you the second world person that you are in between the now and the three generations back? Are you the third world person that you know what? I'm still outdated and I like it like that and nothing is going to make me change or make me move okay this has a long way of people so what are the effects of this world as now the effect of that is number one I like and appreciate that you should first of all identify yourself under these three categories or do you fall under the first, second, and third, okay? Um, so now go the extra mile to identify your kind of spouse. Does it actually fall under the first, second, and the third? The reason why I'm asking and saying that you should actually do this little exercise is it's good you understand the belief system and the mindset of the partner. It, it, it gives you the level of um, understanding of what you guys are doing and how you guys reason in different affairs and matters of life okay so if you actually establish and understand this a lot of marriages and relationship actually break because of um this belief system to some spouse you find out that you're a third world person imagine if a third world actually gets married to a first world person how do you think the state of the marriage is going to result into ask yourself that's a rhetorical question is it going to be blissful or is it going to be adding for the rocks okay so um for singles out there listening to me it's good you are able to identify all of this i've been saying so far this will actually help you in choosing the choice of your partner okay if two world war person actually ends up getting married uh yes um the home zone is actually going to be most likely it's been confirmed based on research to be blissful or adding for blissful state it's, it's going to add it's going to be a blissful state and if a first or a third world person actually coming together um to get married you need to critically you need if a first world and a third world person is actually going to come together you need to critically ask yourself some fundamental question before you settle down in marriage okay so for you thinking that okay so what if we are already into it how do we mitigate okay so the way for you to mitigate right now is see communication is actually the lifeblood of every relationship sit down have a time away or your seat in time either outside your own or in your home to have a conversation on your gray areas okay imagine if your husband who has supposed to be the male figure is now a third world person and you as a wife you are a first world person trust me the woman will be emotionally constantly emotionally battered almost reg on a regular on a regular basis okay so it's very important to be able to identify your spouse's or your relationship's partner's belief system it is one of the most fundamental parts to actually look into okay uh, i hope i have at one point or the other been able to help you please just go back have a takeaway have a seat in have something that resonates with you based on the discussion we have had thus far and please do not just listen alone act the listening do not just be the year alone act and be the doer of it okay i believe i've been able to bless someone or many persons on this platform today thank you so much see you some other time stay blessed
Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I know it was epic and it was mind blowing. Thank you so much, Olamide Akin Pelu, for that. It was just over the rope amazing. And if you're not subscribed to the podcast, please do subscribe on all podcasting platforms. Turn on the notification bell to get notified every time we make a new update. And also subscribe to the Polish Teller podcast on YouTube. And yes, do not forget to also subscribe to our newsletter on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, we are almost celebrating a thousand subscribers. I was just started last week, Tuesday. Please do go and join the fold. And also do not forget to share. Share so that we get more people into the fold and everybody is not left out. Share, 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 share. And also do not forget to follow me on all social media platforms at IT Rachel Michael. IT Rachel Michael across all social media platforms. And yes, till I see you on the next episode, keep being uniquely you because you're beautiful, you're unique, and our creed is coming very soon. So keep your hand crossed. We're going to create our creed and we're going to be using it every time till it, you know, sticks in your head. So keep celebrating yourself because we celebrate you and we love you and we are here to share the love with you. I'll see you on the next episode. Keep being blessed. I love you.